Today we're talking about shoes. I am by no means an expert on shoes. If you want any expert advice, go to Kofuzi's channel, go to Seth James Demora channel. I'm just gonna today talk about my running rotation, the shoes I have in this training block to try to give some insight into what I like. I've, I haven't tried all of the running brands. I don't get sent running shoes. All of these were bought by me, my own personal bank account, RIP. I just wanna try a few new things this year. I've always been kind of like a, a Hoka faithful customer <laughs> in my training blocks. Most of my miles have been put on Clifton's or the Rincon series, but this year I wanted to try some new stuff. So let's just jump in all six. So we're gonna start with the Hoka Clifton eight. I only bought one pair of the eights. I had two pairs of the sevens, but I'm carrying these eights into this training block. I use them for my fall training series and they've been incredible, super padded, comfortable. So I'm just gonna go through stats of each of these pairs, starting with this one. This pair is 8.8 .8 ounces, and I don't know what size that is. I think that's based off like a men's size eight or nine, but I could do a little bit more research and see. Maybe. The Clifton 8 has a 29 millimeter rear stack height, so in the heel of the shoe, it is 29 millimeters, and a drop from the heel to the front, which I never knew what people were talking about when they said drop in running shoes. I just wasn't paying close enough attention, I guess, like I was in, as a student in grade school, but now I know. So whenever you hear drop, when people are talking about running shoes, it's the stack height in the back, the height of the padding, down to the stack height in the front, and the deviation there. So whenever you hear zero drop shoes, that means that they're same height all the way across. So the Clifton 8, 29 millimeter stack height with a five millimeter drop. Uh, there is no plate in that shoe inside the cushion, and is with Hoka's foam, and it is a daily trainer. So you're not doing anything like super special in this. You might be doing strides with an aerobic run or an easy run recovery, maybe even a medium long run. Basically just a daily trainer to get a ton of miles in. Second up, my Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. I raced in these shoes, I got the yellow version. In 2020, I did the first uh, Saucony Endorphin Pro shoe, loved it. Uh, I love the speed roll technology, that rocker in the front of the shoe. So after trying out Nike in 2021, I went back to Saucony in 22 with the Endorphin Pro 2. Put a lot of miles on the shoe, but I use it from time to time for maybe a recovery run or a little bit of speed work. The Pro 2 is a 7.5 ounce shoe, so on the lighter side, it's got a 35.5 millimeter stack height in the rear and then an eight millimeter drop to the front. It does have a carbon fiber plate, as is the case for a lot of racing shoes in the marathon distance. It's made with the Power Run PB foam from Saucony. And yeah, it's, it's made to be a racer or for speed work. Now, it's, I guess, retired as a racer now, like most people aren't electing to use that. Now that Saucony's come up with the Endorphin Pro 3 and now the Endorphin Elite, but you can pick these shoes up for pretty steep discounts and still an incredible racing shoe, so you might wanna consider it. I just like having it back in the rotation for extra miles to keep newer shoes with less miles. Next up, this one, the Hoka Mach 5. The only pair I have in studio today, because I'm about to go run in these today. This is an 8.2 ounce shoe, so similar to that Clifton series shoe. Something I've noticed in it is that the toe box is definitely more narrow. Still a wide toe box, but much more narrow than the Clifton series. This shoe is just incredible. It makes me feel awesome. I don't know if it's just because of the aesthetics of it. I picked this white and gold colorway, which is gorgeous. It's got 29 millimeters of stack height over here, so not as tall as a racer, but still pretty good cushion. Very similar to the Clifton again, same exact five millimeter drop just like the Clifton there is there's no plate in this so not like the carbon fiber plated racers and it is also Hoka foam and I've been using it for easy runs and for workouts kind of that like easy to middle effort type of shoe so anywhere from like a six to 13 mile run I'll take these out but I've honestly been using them a lot on the treadmill because I wanted to keep them clean Next up, the Nike Zoom Fly 5. I was in my local running store and I was about to pick up another pair of Clifton 8s because I love them in my training box so much in the fall. But the employee there had me try on other shoes. She's like, have you tried the Fly 5? I don't know if she was just like trying to get those off the shelf because people aren't as stoked on the Zoom Fly 5. But I tried them on and they felt super, super comfortable and that's what drew me to them. So I was like, you know what? Might as well just try something different. And then the first workout I did in them, which I did a speed workout, which is not what they're meant for, but I noticed how heavy they were in comparison to any other training shoe I've had. 
And that checks out because they're 10.1 ounces, the heaviest out of all of my shoes I think I've ever owned. They have a 41 millimeter stack height in the back, which technically is illegal to race in. You're not supposed to go above 40 millimeters. That's why a lot of racing shoes now are like 39.5, 39. So 41 millimeter stack height, which is really good for recovery, for padding, to keep your feet and your legs from breaking down more. There is an eight millimeter drop from that 41 down. And weirdly enough, this also has a carbon fiber plate. I didn't realize that. Maybe that's why they are on the much more expensive side. That would make sense. Carbon fiber, I guess, giving you more reaction. I don't really know, honestly. I've heard recently that the foam is actually more important than the plate, and the plate is almost kind of a gimmick thing. I don't know. You can discuss down in the comments. I would love to hear your responses and what you think about carbon fiber plate versus the foam. Please let me know down below. It has Nike React foam, and it has some recycled foam within the bottom of the shoe as well. And I have been using it for easy runs and medium, long, long runs. Stuff that isn't like super high intensity effort. I did take it for a 17 mile run this past weekend and they reacted actually really, really well. I don't know if that's just because my fitness is super good now, a lot better, or that I'm just getting used to the shoe, but I've been using it mostly for easy and recovery and medium distance. So moving into the last two, the most exciting shoes in my rotation right now, I have the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. And this is basically my workout shoe. Anytime I wanna do something really fast or I'm doing mile repeats, 800 meter repeats, two mile repeats, uh, marathon pace stuff, anything in that like middle to high range of effort, I'm putting these on. 8.1 ounces, which is on the lighter side, closer to the racing weight of shoes. A 36 millimeter stack height with an eight millimeter drop. And they have a winged nylon plate whatever that means. <laughs> so some sort of energy return, um, maybe not as good as carbon fiber, not sure. Love how these shoes fit, feel. I feel fast in them. Great workout shoe. It's also the Power Run PB foam in these. And like I said, I use them for the, the bigger, badder efforts. <laughs> Big, bad, and beautiful efforts. You know, I don't wanna be fast. These Saucony shoes also have that speed roll technology in the front where there's that big rocker so it's like really curved and it almost feels like it's sending you forward. If you've never tried them on before, you just have to put them on to kind of experience what that feels like. That's what I love about Saucony speed and racing shoes is just, you always kind of feel like you're falling forward and I love that feeling with pushing my body forward in my stride. Finally, my Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. I haven't used them since my races in the fall in Chicago and New York. They almost have 100 miles on them, so some people would argue I probably shouldn't even use them anymore. I'm literally only gonna use them for one or two workouts at the end of this training block, and then I'm gonna race in them one final time in my spring race, April 8th, Carmel Marathon. They are 7.2 ounces, so the lightest shoe out of everything I own. Uh, 39.5 millimeter stack height, so just under that legal limit with an eight millimeter drop. They have the carbon fiber plate, they have the Power Run PB foam that Saucony is so famous for, which now their Elite shoe actually has a completely different foam that's supposed to be even better, and a carbon fiber plate that's like not flat and has like little fingers or something, but that shoe's $275. I think the Pro 3 is still 225, but as the Elite becomes more popular, the three is probably gonna drop in price similar to the two. It's almost exclusively a racing shoe, much like the Alpha Fly and Vapor Fly series. The Nikes, um, most people are using them exclusively for races and maybe some really quick speed workouts, but I like to challenge myself to not use these super shoes in workouts in my training block because I don't wanna be used to the benefits that they give with that foam, that carbon plate, and the energy return that they give. So very minimally, just to make sure that I can race in them, that they don't give me any blisters, that I feel comfortable in them, and then I go and race in them to try to keep the mileage down on those, get my money's worth out of them for races. And like I said, they also have the speed roll technology in the front. Pro 3 is one of my favorite shoes I've ever run in. I'm really stoked to race in them again. I might just pick up another pair for the fall instead of going with the Elite, but I'm really tempted to try out the Saucony Elite, so. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, I hope that was informative or interesting or something. Just let me know if you have any questions about any of these shoes down in the comments. Hopefully I can answer something about them. And then also comment if you like any other kinds of brands or types of shoes for any of those runs like recovery, speed, or racing. I feel very insecure talking about this stuff. Take it or leave it is what it is. You can follow me on Strava where I share every shoe I do a workout in. I will see you next time for Runs. Bye.